All right. Today we are going to continue um, along the same lines, same, same theme that we did last week. And last week we talked about being meaner than a snake. And we talked about how that we just know people who are always out to get you, um, who are always up to no good. They're super mean in everything they do. This week, we're going to talk about monkey see, monkey do. And we've heard this all of our life. And um, that's our topic for today. Um, but what does, when someone says monkey see, monkey do, what does that mean? Um, it means that someone is going to copy what you're doing. Whether it's the way you talk, something you're actually doing, the way you dress, on and on and on. We all know some people who act like this, and we see it mostly in kids. Um, and I think of it a lot, um, school age kids. I think about it on the playground. Um, it kind of reminds me of like the dare, I dare you to do this. Um, the kids see what other kids are doing. And I see it a lot in my own kids. And it doesn't matter how silly it is, how ridiculous it is, how dangerous it is. They see someone else doing it and they automatically think they can do it. So that is where we get the phrase, monkey see, monkey do. My kids see it, they see someone else do it, and they want to do it. Um, but I never thought about this in a Bible perspective. I never thought about um, a... An example in the Bible of monkey see, monkey do, but there actually is one. And it's between a mother and her child. And this is where the child is following her mother's lead. Um, and these people are Herodias and Salome. And I'm sure you all know this story. Um, and if you don't, once we go through it, you will know it. But the most, I don't want to say famous, but the thing if someone said Herodias, the first thing that comes to my mind is the huge party she threw for her husband, Philip. And that's probably, if you ask anybody about Herodias and Salome, that's who, that's the situation they're going to remember. That's the situation that stands out. So before we read that account, um, there's a little bit of background to Herodias. Herodias um, had been married to Philip, which is Herod's brother, but Herod took Philip's wife for, Philip's wife for his own. This affair was very well known. Okay, it wasn't kept secret. It was very public. People knew about it. And John the Baptist called him out on it, for lack of better words. Um, and Herodias didn't like it. And um, he told her how wrong she was, told her that she was um, um, going against the law and violation of the law. And when this happened, Herodias is evil and she wants revenge. She wants to get John back, so she had him beheaded. What better way to get rid of somebody that's calling you problem that's causing you problems than to just cut their head off? Um, and we know that this happened or this um, action occurred because of her daughter Salome. It was her wish. Um, so without all those three things happening, without John calling Herodias out, without Herodias being evil and wanting revenge, and without Salome. Um, granting that wish of her mother or fulfilling that wish of her mother, none of this would have happened. So I want to read exactly what happened. And I'm going to read from Mark chapter 6, verses 14 through 29. And we're going to see um, everything that takes place here. And then we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about how this applies to monkey see, monkey do. So starting in verses 14. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said he is Elijah. And others said he is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, Is it not lawful for you to have your brother's wife? And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was righteous and a holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guest. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. 
And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And, he, and she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and, and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths, and his guests did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executor with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and lay it in a tomb. So that is the account. Um, we see that um, where Herodias was wrong, she was married. She went and found another man while she was still married. Again, her husband knew it. Um, the, his brother knew it. The guy she married knew it. Um, they didn't care. We have John, who is a righteous man. He comes up. He's a man of God. He tells Philip, hey, you're wrong. He tells King Herod, you're wrong. Um, King Herod is perplexed. He's got an evil wife. He knows she's cheated on him. But he needs John. John is keeping him safe. So he chooses his wife. He chooses not to listen to John. He chooses to um, ignore the situation and live like they're living. Um, and then it comes back to haunt him. John's in prison. Um, King Herod is having a birthday party, a feast. Um, back then, you know, they go all out, kind of like some of us do for big birthday parties here. We go all out. We try to find the most extravagant things. Um, we try to have, um, good entertainment, whatever we do to make that day extra special. And that is what Herod is having here. And his Herodias, or Salome comes out. She's dancing. And for the guys, and they're probably drunk. And the king says, whatever you want from me, I'll give to you. And she runs back to her mother, Herodias, and says, what should I ask for? Um, and we'll get to that in a minute um, about that odd situation right there. But Herodias says, I want John the Baptist head on plate. That's the only way she knows she's going to get John the Baptist out of her life. Um, and so this is her chance to get it, and she gets it. So Salome goes back. Um tells the king what she wants he does it john the baptist is beheaded and then we see that the um, disciples come and take his body and properly bury it after that but in verse 24 when it says and she shalom went out and asked to her mother for what should i ask that seems odd to me this girl is granted anything she wants and she can't think of anything. And this is where the monkey see, monkey do comes in. We do not know why Salome could not come up with something for herself. All we know is she didn't. We know she went back to her mother. Now, how hard would that be for some of us? If some of us, if someone was to come up to us and said, I would give you anything you want. You just ask and it's yours. How many of us would have a hard time thinking of something? How many of us would not know something right off the bat that we'd want? Ask my kids. Ask a child, any child, any teenager, any college student. You ask them what they want, and it's not just one thing. They may have a hard time deciding which of the hundred things they want that they, they can only have one, but they will start rattling stuff off the minute you give them the choice. So it's very odd that this girl, and she's a young girl, we're thinking 10, 12, 13, 14 years old, has nothing to ask for. But if we stop and look at who her mother is, the monkey see, monkey do, her mother is evil. This child is, gr is growing up evil. She might have not, you know, it may have taken her back of most of the time when people offer you something, it's something good, right? If you give you anything, you want something good. Um, and as we can tell, she went and We don't know, like I said, we don't know what she, why she didn't answer for herself. But she went to It could have been her age. Um, she could have felt that she wasn't old enough to ask for something. Um, it could have been she knows how evil her mother is. And if she doesn't ask for what something her mother wants, it would cost her. We really don't know. We have no clue why this happened this way. But we know that she goes back to Herodias, and Herodias says, I want the head of John. And, of course, she goes back and she gets it. So now Herodias, through her daughter, got revenge. Monkey see, monkey do. But it doesn't stop there. 
Salome continued to follow her mother's footsteps in many ways. Um, she follows her mother's footsteps in marriage, morality, and manipulation. And I am going to read um, a little bit from the book I told you that I am using for this study, and it's called Getting Along um, by Nancy Ekman. And I am going to read these three, these three points because I don't think I could have said it any better than what Nancy says here. So the first thing that she's that Salome is following Herodias' footsteps in is marriage. Salome and Herodias became intric intricately I can't say that word entangled in the matrimonial web of Herod's family. Historians tell us that Salome married Philip the Tetrarch, a different Philip from her father, who at the same time was her uncle and great uncle. This Philip is mentioned with Herod in Luke three one. She followed the course of her mother Herodias who first married her uncle Philip and later another uncle and brother-in-law, Herod. No wonder John the Baptist was so vocal in denouncing this family's relational intrigue. So we see like mother, like daughter. Mother married a family member. The daughter does the same thing. Let's talk about it in um, aspect to morality. Salome discarded all appearances of decency as she danced alone before the men at Herod's party. Such performances were vulgar, with sexual connotations, usually performed by prostitutes. Even if Salome was maybe 12, 14 years old, um, as some commentaries suggest, virgins at that age could be married in Jewish Palestine. Certainly, men in the audience were no doubt pleased with what, she, what, she, what they saw, what she provided. But Herodias allowed her daughter to do this, allowed this dance to happen, and even perhaps encouraged her own daughter to do it. Again, what kind of life is Herodias setting for her daughter? Obviously not a good one, and we don't know, but maybe Herodias usually dances at the parties. We don't know. Again, monkey see, monkey do. And the last one is manipulation. We do not know how much Salome knew of her mother's hatred for John the Baptist and the desire to kill him. But we do know Salome seemed willingly to carry out her mother's request. At once, the girl hurried into the king with the request, I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. An executioner presented it to the girl and she gave it to her mother. Again, we see this in Mark 6, verses 25 through 28. If Salome was younger, it makes all the more tragic that a young girl could be caught up in her mother's foul scheme. Again, what is this leading up to in Salome's older years? If she's being taught this by the age of 10, 11, 12, is she going to change? Um, what is she doing? If we go back to the whole theme, monkey see, monkey do, she's following in her mother's footsteps. It doesn't seem that she is going to turn around and be a better person. We saw in these three examples that Herodias has a big influence on her daughter. She was shaped by her mother's wicked actions and words, and she learned about aggression and cruelty from her mother. Are we like Herodias? Stop and think about that for a minute. As a parent, and you say, okay, well, I'm not a parent. Okay, as a friend, as a co-worker, as a Christian, as a neighbor, as whatever you want to fill in the blank, are we like Herodias? Are we setting a good example or are we wicked? Are we only showing our daughters, our friends, our peers, our whoever, the world, the wicked side? Are we a Herodias? Is that the monkey see, monkey do that we want to be passing on to our children, our grandchildren, our friends, our community? I know this devotional has been heavy on the wrong things that, um, that we do, um, all the bad things. You know, Herodias was bad, bad, bad. But let's flip it for a minute. Isn't the opposite true as well? Daughters learn from their mothers. Friends learn from friends. Coworkers learn from girls. Whatever. I don't want you all to think that this is just me harping on a mother-daughter relationship. I see this in any relationship. We learn from each other. We learn how to treat people. We learn respect. We learn how to be proper. The whole point of this devotional is what are we teaching others? 
if I am going to monkey see, monkey do what you are doing, is it teaching hatred? Or are you going to be teaching me to be the loving Christian that we are called to be? So I want you all to think about that this week. Just think about just the little catchphrase, monkey see, monkey do. And someone is always watching you. And if they were to copy your example, your everyday example, not just Sunday morning when you're sitting in the pew doing what y'all do, but the Monday through Saturday, at home, at work, in the grocery store, at the gas station, anywhere you are, what example are you leading? Are we being a Herodias? And if we are, we need to change that. We don't want to be Hero- be a Herodias. Um, and whether or not you have children or not, people who do have children, they're watching everybody. Um, my kids don't just watch me. They watch everybody. Um, and that was my point of the devotional. You don't have to be a mother for this to be beneficial. Um, you don't have to be a mother to be a Herodias. You can be evil and not be a mother. Um, but just think about this week. Our monkey see, monkey do attitude. Is it worth following? Again, I hope you all have a great week and I will see you all here next week.